NASCAR Cup Series Victory Lane Review. Take a look back and see how the race was won in Las Vegas. Welcome back, 51 to go. Closing stage of the first race of the round of eight in the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. The Xfinity fastest lap. Oh, it so appropriately belongs to one of the playoff drivers, the pole man, and the guy who has led 142 laps today. That's Christopher Bell. Let's talk more about playoff drivers. Kim Kuhn kicks us off. Let's go, Kimmy. Yeah, Christopher Bell in the lead after the winning the poll yesterday and we won the poll. I asked him, is this a statement by the team? And he said, no, because we've done this before. We won the poll, but we have not won this race. And so that went to thinking this weekend for the team. Crew Chief Adam Stevens did not select pit stall one. They chose pit stall six. He told me we've been here, we've gotten the poll, we've had pit stall one, had the best car, still lost the race. So I, I make the exact same choice again and don't win this race. Then I look like an idiot. They knew they had to try something new. Adam also told me anything outside of a win is a disappointment here this afternoon, Marty. They've led 143 laps. Kim, the year started off so well for William Byron, winning the Daytona 500, the first driver to win multiple races this year. But in the summer, the start of the playoffs, their speed was gone. I asked Rudy Fugel, what did you change to get that performance out of the car in the round of 12? He said, honestly, nothing. But William and I sat down and said, hey, let's stop worrying about things in the future. Races to come. Let's focus week by week. That's the playbook, Dylan, they used last year to make it to the championship four. Hoping they can do it again this year. Joey Logano runs in 12th right now, going backwards, battling a tight race car. But he said earlier this weekend, execution is our bread and butter. If we do that, things are going to end up in our favor. And on a day with so many issues for so many other playoff drivers, they've been quietly near the front all day. They scored stage points, and as we sit now, have gone from eighth in points at the start of the day to fourth and in by six. Behind them, a couple spots, Denny Hamlin rides in the 15th position. Chris Gabart said earlier today, the last round felt like a haunted house. It was so chaotic for us. The next four races are way more in our wheelhouse. That's true of everybody, but they like when they can control their own destiny. Their destiny today, though, has been a lot more chaos. The issues of others have minimized some of the damage, but the 11 likely going to have some work to do the next couple weeks, Kim. Speaking of chaos, how about Kyle Larson in the 16th position? That's all they've had to deal with today. And it's interesting because I talked to Crew Chief Cliff Daniels this morning and said, what are you guys feeling headed into this round? And he said, you know, the theme for us is that we are a resilient bunch. We stay battle tested. Well, they got tested today. They had aluminum in the grill. Then they had a big pit road mishap. Right now, though, they have rebounded well in that 16th position, got a lap back after being two laps down. That lucky dog position he stole from Ty Gibbs before Ty went crashing out. And right now, great rebound for Larson, Marty. Kim, this is a Las Vegas weekend. Ryan Blaney would love to forget. A lap one crash in practice. They had to go to a backup car. They had to start last. He worked his way forward and then contact with the wall. They have damage on the car. It's hurt pretty bad. Blaney limping around. The one thing, Kim, they have in their back pocket here in the round of eight. Remember last year, on his way to the championship, Ryan Blaney won at Martinsville, put himself in the championship four. He might do need to do that again this year. Yeah, Marty, it's been a dismal day for a number of playoff drivers, including Chase Elliott, through no fault of his own. He was part of that incident with Tyler Reddick. That team very upset with the 45. Just felt like they were trying and taking too much. And one of their strengths this season has been their consistency. But that does not mean that consistency is going to guarantee you a spot in Phoenix. Crew Chief Alan Gustafson told me we have got to win, though. Chase Elliott now 26 laps down after the incident. They had to go to the garage to change a control arm on that number nine Chevrolet. What well, seven cars of the eight update because we're missing one, and that's Tyler Reddick, who's not on the racetrack yet because of this accident earlier today. Yeah, this was big battle off turn four. Truex Elliott, Reddick, watch Reddick. It's the little quarter mile racetrack in the infield, and over he goes. Has the presence to drive at the pit road, but too much damage. Well, with 42 to go, we have a lot going on here with the playoff drivers, but a lot going on in the race. This man right here, 48 of Alex Bowman, is up to the second position and rolling. So let's kind of set the stage. We have 24 cars on the lead lap. It's an uncomfortable run from the last caution to the finish on fuel for all of them. I believe some can make it, some are short. It's the approach that I'm not sure we really know about. From what I see out of this 48 and what I'm reading on the radio, they're not sure the tires won't run 70 laps, 
and they're looking for the all-out push. So I think what you're going to see right here is the 48 run as hard as possible and then just pit anyway. I think there's going to be a wave of cars that pit halfway in this run right now. And what they're going to try to do is put fresh tires on it, increase the pace, and push the drivers who are trying to save fuel. Now Adam Stevens, the crew chief for the 20, has got to make a decision. Are you running to the finish or are you coming to get tires? You can't be in the middle. If you run 15 extra laps and then pit anyway, the guys that have pitted are going to jump over you on the racetrack. Such a tough decision for a crew chief as now we see Bowman this from the time, top no, three time. pit. Oh, there we go. Decision made. Pit this time. We heard the live radio from the 20. Marty. Here comes Alex Bowman down pit road. They're going to pit for the fuel they need and tires as well. So Steve seems to be opening up here. Now that Bell is going to make his move, what do you do if you're Rudy Fugel? He told me a moment ago, we're close. We're about two laps short. I think at this point, you race the 20. You see the 20 on the bottom of your screen come to pit road. The 20 and four will assume the lead. I think if you're Rudy Fugel with the situation you have in points right now, you're racing playoff drivers. Kim. So Adam Stevens and this Christopher Bell team, their hand was forced by other cars stopping. He's going to make a stop. He said just got a little bit tighter this run. Don't expect any major changes, though, from Bell as they will take tires and put fuel. And we'll wait and watch the Byron call. Last stop for the 20. What a day it's been. 154 laps led by Christopher Bell. He's released. I believe the 20 is going to lose a position to the 48 anyway. I don't know if the stop was slow or just maybe my depth perception is on, off. We're on board with the 48. The 20 is going to be up, way up there on the left on the apron. The 99 is killing the 48 right here, though. Here we go. That's Bell blending up in front. How quick would the momentum happen? Will the 20 be able to stay in front of the 48? I guess he will. I thought it was going to be closer than that. Still close the gap, though. Yeah. Body. So the answer is Rudy Fugel brought William Byron to pit road. He asked him how the handling was. He said, it's still the same, just a little bit too free. The short run has been their strength all day long. We'll see a recycle that if he can take advantage of that. Top of the screen, this will be the race for the win if this is the right strategy. And let me capitalize and bold if the 99 on the racetrack. How about Logano and Hamlin, two playoff drivers that have had Unbelievable week. Logano in due to penalty. Logano went up and down day off Hare Road. Can a fuel strategy win be the difference maker for Logano and Hamlin? A lot of laps to go. Well, I mentioned Denny Hamlin, who's running third. Let's take a listen and see what they're saying on fuel. You're saving fuel, not use a brake. Therefore, we want to slow down, correct? Right? Yeah. Your pace when you were in all that traffic for fuel saving was fine. In open air, you haven't been saving enough. I like, so, this is where these crew chiefs that are so good have taken the emotion out. There was no emotion. That was as detailed. Fanny Hamlin asked a very simple question. You, but we're, so we're on the same page. What you're asking me to do, I'm going to slow down. Yes, that is your instruction. And it's just so, it's, it's refreshing to listen to teams under all this pressure try to find a way to kind of solve this puzzle in a different manner. You know, if you kind of chart this out on what it looks like right here, at their current pace, Bell gets a Suarez with about two to go. Now that's, you know, a lot of mathematical guessing on the last 23 laps of how they're going to kind of pick up. We hear about these teams' war rooms. I can assure you both the 99 and the 20 know that predictive software I just told you about. We'll see if it works. And if you're Bell, just like we heard Hamlin, you're now hearing Bell say, hey, if you want to catch him, we need more pace. So we we gonna... cannot waste any time. We should get there with three or four to go. We cannot, I mean, there we cannot you go. waste any time. Let's go. So their software tells them three or four to go. So now Adam Steven, because you don't want to get all done, and Bell say, well, I didn't know it was going to be that close. He goes, nope. It's got to be this close. You got to go. We should catch him, but we got to go. 16.4 seconds. It was at 26 seconds when we started logging it. There's Adam Stevens. Adam Stevens, just so much experience. Think about when he was an engineer, worked with Tony Stewart, Kyle Busch, his crew chief. 
So many great drivers and characters, and he knows all about pressure situations. It's pretty pretty clear for Christopher Bell what he needs to do, just make lap time. But for the for Suarez and Logano, and I think for Logano it's even harder because right. he can see the lead in front of him. The temptation is to push a little bit harder than you really need to because the lead and the ticket to win a championship in Phoenix is right in front of you. You cannot push too hard and run yourself out of fuel. Well, let's take a look what the 22 is doing. We're going to see the 21 in front, wide open down the straightaways. I'd be shocked if you see any break. No red because you just let the car coast. Part throttle, part throttle, wide open throttle. Probably runs wide open down the straightaways. There's just not a lot of way to save fuel here other than be in the gas less, Jeff. I mean, use less brake. You, you heard it. You heard Chris Gabehart tell Denny Hamlin, no brake, no brake. The reason why is because that slows the car down. To recover that pace, you have to use more throttle. So you do not want to slow it down any more than you absolutely have to to make the corner. 19 to go, and 14.5 seconds is the gap from Suarez to Bell. All right, so seven laps ago, we kind of put that track map up. It was about almost three quarters of a lap different between the 99 and the 20. So let's take another peek. We'll put the map back up and let's see. We have the 99, let's see, compared to the 20. Start finish line's a pretty good way. The 20 was over about a three quarters of a lap down. 20 at the start finish now, but definitely less than a half a lap. So he is making up big chunks on the 20. Oh, excuse me, on the 99, yes. Keep watching that top left of your screen. Just keep watching the Bell deficit to Suarez, and it just keeps decreasing. Just so exciting to see which one of these plans they deviated. And it was a mark in, mark in time. You either were going to pit or you weren't. I like the 20s call. I love the 24s call to chase him down pit road and race the playoff cars. And Logano and Hamlin, I, I, I didn't think this gamble was on the table, but they're proving me wrong. And that's what I love about this garage and this pit road and these crew chiefs. They are not afraid to find a new way. Data analytics and engineering is changing the picture of NASCAR as well as every sport. They all look different today. This is an example of it. Jeff, for this man we ride with here, Christopher Bell, if he comes away with anything other than a win, when you've led in excess of 150 laps, it's been the car to beat all day. Can he do it? Less than 12 seconds now, 11.8. Well, the frustration would certainly be high. The second faster that lap. 16 to go, 11 seconds back. So let's look at the difference, right? You see the 20 kind of out of the gas a little bit, but look right back to wide open throttle. His top speed's going to be probably north of 190 miles an hour, even to use a little, a little bit of brake. You look at Suarez. He's running about a second slower. He's just off the throttle longer. So it's not like it's part throttle. I'm talking up here, right? He's still wide open down the straightaways. Rolls out, though. No brake being used. You look at the 20 at the bottom of the screen. When he drives down to turn three, you see if he uses a little brake. Just to set the nose, Jeff. Like, just a little drag of the brake. Yeah, right? I mean, just a little, but some. Very little. That was too much for Gabehart, though. He didn't want He wanted no brake. So 31.70 for Suarez. 30.80 for Christopher Bell, nine tenths of a second. And the gap under 10 seconds, 9.8. He has brought that from some 30 seconds behind. We started tracking it at 26 seconds. And what we don't know is how much has the 99 saved. Yeah, that's he right. He might have some more speed left in that car. Also playing the same game, John Hunter Nemechek, who runs fourth as Suarez. Look at the 20, look what's in front of him. He's got to get by these cars quickly. His pace will come down as he catches all these cars. Almost a second faster that lap. 8.8 .8 seconds. Up, oh, getting a little help right here. 13 to go. That was weird. I thought he could have just jumped to the outside of him, but he was on the bottom. That's Nemechek. And another one off his list. Uh, that ate up some time, though. Let's see what that lap time was. Yep, 31 24. That's almost a half a second slower than the lap before. Jeff, you talked about it. You've got to come down to two or three laps. Two or three passes over a 60 lap run. That's going to make the difference for the 20 car.
Dylan, what you got? Just uh, giving updates on the 22 for Logano, listening to Paul Wolf, the crew chief, and Coleman Presley, uh, who has, also has all kinds of data up on top of the spotter stand. They feel like that it's probably inevitable that Bell gets them, so their instruction now, try to run hard here, and then after the 20 gets by us, we'll manage then. But then Paul just came back on the radio and said, well, if he hits traffic, he may not get to us. So the gap is shrinking between Logano and Suarez, the leader. So I think their plan now is to try to go up here and maybe race for the lead and just hope that Bell doesn't get to him. What's the question mark? Every equation has a variable. In racing, and in this specific instance, the variable is traffic. You can predict all you want, but as long as there's a variable inside the equation, you really don't know the answer. Mr. Ravel is just hung up in all sorts of traffic right here. I mean, he's just, his pace came down by four tenths of a second for three laps in a row. He's gonna fight his teammate, Denny Hamlin, fellow playoff driver. Hamlin's third, there he is. Mel should make quick work of this and does. All right, that's Bell now up to third. 6.6 .6 seconds in arrears. And look at the other gap. Logano is under a second. I know the 20 is in traffic, but I believe the 22 can get the 99 on raw speed. Nine laps to go, a lot to be answered. Playoff drivers second, third, and fourth. Can you imagine if Joey Logano won this race after last week? Look at that. Look at this. Teammate pushing Teammates him. helping. Drafting down the straightaway for more raw speed. That pink car to the left, that's leader Daniel Suarez. If you're going to gamble, go all in. Push your chips in. Can you win the first race of the round? <laughs> a, a week ago, he was out. He did everything that he could at the Roval, but it wasn't enough. Reddick, Reddick had made it. And Logano was out, and Joey said, you know, well, I knew that we were still in on the owner's points, but I was out from the driver's championship. St uh, standpoint but he said so we're still going to race and then on the way home i started hearing a few things about tech and then i found out the news first and second third now on the same straightaway christopher bell what is five seconds pink car first yellow car second start finish line behind you'll see bell not very far behind he's going to jump into the picture he's right there black Hood, white nose, that's Bell. Not a lot of traffic between him and the leaders now, Jeff. And just like the Penske duo, the JGR teammates are together. With Gibbs trying to help the best that he can from behind Bell. This is wild. There's Suarez, there's Logano, and way up high is Ryan Blaney. He's got his own story to tell today, unfortunately. Started in a backup car after the practice crash yesterday. And he's trying to do everything he can to help his team Penske teammate. We are inside six laps. And Christopher Bell has to make up a 4.2 second deficit. He's, he's eight tenths of a second faster that lap. You see right here racing on your left, top right, crew chief of the 22, Paul Wolf, bottom right, crew chief of Christopher Bell, Adam Stevens. And you see right there, bottom left, that is crew chief. Here we go. 99, Matt Skorderski is watching Here the battle for the lead. Look at this. There's going to be traffic coming to play up here. Logano's on the inside of Suarez. That's Jimmy Johnson who stays up high and out of it. New race leader inside the final five laps. How You asked him, is this house money? Well, how far would the house money carry Joey Logano? Can he win this race? 3.1 seconds is the deficit from Logano to Bell. Bell should come into view in that top box. Keep looking to your right. There he is. That's Bell right there. He's going to be coming very fast. Fresher tires, just to review. The front guy stretching fuel, older tires. Bell, 30 lap pressure tires on board with the driver of the 20. Joey Logano has two championships and both of those championships, he won this race. 2.6 seconds from first to third with less than four to go. Can you believe the way that this round of eight has started? Massive multi-car crash on this front stretch involving playoff drivers. The last guy to get into the round of eight in odd circumstances after a disqualification leads with just three to go. It's closing under two seconds for Bell, but look, two seconds but four lap cars. That could be the difference. Clear track, I think he has a chance. With traffic, it's gonna take really special moves out of the 20. He's gotta get by Suarez. He's gotta get past Joey Logano's teammate, Ryan Blaney. Can you believe what we're seeing? The guy who's led 155 laps today is fighting 
to get a victory and lock himself in to the championship round of four. The last guy to get into the round of eight may just lock his way into Phoenix in the most incredible circumstances. It's not over yet, though. 1.6 seconds. That's what it looks like. The Pennzoil Ford for Team Penske. One more to go. One lap left, presented by Credit One Bank. Bell is clear. Does he have a shot? It's going to be tough. Logano is in view. This has been the fastest car over the last 30 plus laps. Been the fastest car all day, as a matter of fact. And now Bell's there, but it may be just too much to do. Too close to the line. Can you believe what you are seeing? Joey Logano is the last into the round of eight. Joey Logano wins Las Vegas. He's going to Phoenix. Oh! That's what two-time cup champions do. They rise to the occasion. A week ago, he was out. He was back in on Sunday night. And here in Las Vegas, oh, guys. Everyone, great job. is confirmed into the championship four. Congratulations, Team Penske, Joey Logano. Incredible. Last week. Hell yeah. What a race. That was something special. Paul Wolf and your team, congrats. The discipline by Joey Logano to understand with directions from Paul Wolf how fast to go over that extended amount of time and Christopher Bell to be within a half a second of him. Think about that. Think about how that has to be timed out. It couldn't have been done any better. He started the playoffs with a victory and now confirms his way to Phoenix in the championship four. Joey Logano wins the South Point 400. Hi, I'm Parker Kligerman. For more access like this from Pit Road, be sure to click and subscribe to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube channel.